In this video, we will review Google Cloud Platform VPC Custom Mode. This is part two of this series. As you can see on this page from Google Cloud's website, Google Cloud VPCs come in two types, Auto Mode and Custom Mode. In the previous video, we reviewed Auto Mode. And as you saw, there was not much to it. We really didn't have to configure anything. Custom Mode VPC allows you to control everything but there are some gotchas that you have to be aware of. As mentioned in this document, no subnets are created for us. So let's create our custom VPC by going over to the VPC menu option and then click on Create VPC Network. We give it a name, a description, and then we also have to create our subnets. The nice thing about this is that you can choose which regions you want to use. Today, we will use two regions. I will add a subnet for the US Central One region. And I will make this a 10.1.0.0. As with all routing, we have to make sure that our network is in the correct format. For US Central 1, we will pick 10.1.0.0 with the slash 24. Once you create this first subnet, we are done. But you can also add a subnet here while you're creating the VPC. But Let's do it this way. We'll show you a way to do this in case you already have a custom VPC set up and later on you want to add a region. So this takes a little bit, a few minutes for the custom VPC to come up. So we wait. In the meantime, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do so now so you don't miss my next video. But please watch the complete video and then attempt this on your own Google Cloud account. As you can see, our VPC is now ready. Now we will add a subnet in the Asia East 1 region. And here I would like to show you one little detail. And like the other one, we name our VPC And here under IP address range, we have to make sure that we don't have overlapping IP addresses. So for this region, we will choose the 10.2.0.0 network. And once you add it, it takes a few seconds for it to populate. One other thing that you do not have any of are firewall rules. There are no firewall rules when you create a custom VPC. Basically, you can't access anything. So we have to create at least one firewall rule. And we will use pings to test our connectivity from the US Central Region to the Asia East Region. So we can name our firewall rule, anything that you want. It's good to put a description and I'll just say it's allow ICMP from everywhere, allow ICMP all. And just make the name the same as the description. And here we select our IP address range or source IP address. This one that you see here, this basically means anyone, anywhere in the internet can send ICMP or pings. And we have to take a look at the protocol because we're not specifying a port. We will click on other protocols and specify ICMP. Now that that's 
ready, we will be able to test. And if we take a look at the routes, we will see that these do get populated automatically, which is a very nice feature. If you've done networking and understand routing protocols, you've heard of static routes and you've heard of dynamic routes. And here we did not have to create the static route. It was dynamically created for us in our VPC. And now that we have two VPCs, we have to be careful because now we have to take a look at what network we are looking at. So we have to look at if we're looking at the routes, all the routes will be there for all VPCs, the default one and the custom one. So we could filter that. Another way to take a look at this is to sort it. And if we sort it by the network type, we will see our custom VPC routes and our firewall rules. Now let's create two instances, one in US Central one and one in Asia East one. And when we take a look at this, everything seems normal. It doesn't seem like there is a way to specify that we don't want the default VPC. So we have to come down to this area and to the network interface and to the network. Here's where we choose our custom VPC. And now you see the subnet that we created 10.1. Now we could just create or launch this compute engine. One, one little thing that I forgot is to change the compute engine type. So we don't want to incur too much cost in building this network out. We take a final look at our configuration and then we launch this compute engine instance. And while this instance is launching, we don't have to sit and wait. We can create our instance in the Asia East region. And because we created the first one, we might feel a little comfortable and might think that we could skip some steps. But I want to show you something here. If we attempt to skip the steps, what will happen when we come down and try to change our networking? So we pick the custom VPC and you will see that we only have US Central Region here. Why? Because we skipped the step. Here in the regions, we have to pick the region that we want. And now the menu options change and they allow us to pick our custom VPC and the correct subnet. If we had more than one subnet in the Asia region, it would allow us to select it. And now that our instance are launching, we can attempt to SSH into them and see if pings will go across the pond and see if everything is working. Now that they're both up and running, Let's attempt to SSH into both of them. One thing that you will notice is that the internal IP addresses are assigned correctly. US Central, 10.1 network. East Asia, 10.2 network. And they also got assigned external IP addresses, but we won't worry about those for now. And we will attempt to SSH. And as you could determined now by the time it's taking it seems like this is not going to work 
Let's try to SSH into the Asia one and see if we can get into that one. It just seems to be timing out. What could it be? Can you take a guess at this point? Why SSH is not working? Well, if you recall, there is nothing created for us when we use a custom VPC. We have to enable everything. The subnets were not created for us automatically. We had to do it. The firewall rules were not there. And we only created one firewall rule. Do you remember what it was? ICMP. So by default, there is an implied deny all statements. And here we take a look at our firewall rules and you see we only have ICMP, permit ICMP. At the end of that permit, there is the implied deny all, which denies SSH, even from Google Cloud's own council. So let's allow SSH now, and this should get us working. And we want to allow from all instances in the network, we want to allow anyone on the internet to be able to SSH into these instances. And we will select TCP port 22, as you know, for SSH. And now this firewall rule gets created and added quite fast. Now let's go back and see if we can SSH into our Compute Engine. And we will just attempt one because we know the rule applies to all of them. It's, it's all instances in this network. And that's the beauty of this. We don't have to go into each VPC in each region to enable our security policies. The security policies apply on in our entire global Google VPC. But it seems that this is going to time out. It doesn't seem like SSH is working. And there we go. Connection failed. Why? Remember, we mentioned at the beginning, we have to make sure we are applying the rule to the correct VPC. In this example, we have two VPCs, the default one and the custom VPC. When we created the rule, we created it in the wrong VPC. So let's modify it. You will learn this lesson. You cannot modify it. Well, you cannot modify the network it belongs to. So in this case, we want to delete it because we don't want to allow SSH from anywhere on our default VPC. We actually have to create a new rule. We go through the same steps, but we have to ensure that we select the correct network. And here we go. This is our drop down menu. We select custom VPC. Now the rule applies to all instances in our VPC, the custom VPC. And as you can see, it tells me that the name is in use because it still believes that the rule is still created. This is real time, so we're going kind of fast. So let's just create a new name for it. In the background, it believes that the old rule is still there, even though it's deleted. Now we're successful, it's creating the firewall rule. And now, good practice to always confirm on the right hand side that the network is the correct network, which means the correct VPC. Let's go to our compute engines and let's see if we can now SSH into our devices. And it seems like it is going to work. 
and we see that it worked correct regions correct zones we check the IP address do an IPA not the beer IP space a and we see that we got the correct IP addresses and we will ping across the pond and as you know you cannot send 10 dot networks or pings through the internet so this is writing Google's backbone under sea cables underwater fiber that belongs to Google not touching the internet at all what would happen if we create a new subnet in another region and add a compute engine instance in that region will traffic reach the new region automatically let's find out let's add a subnet in the let's pick a region let's pick the Europe North one region and we will give it a name for our standard practice I just call it the same thing as the region and let's pick a different subnet and remember we can't use the same subnets we have already used so let's give it a 10.3 subnet and we add this and it should populate in a few seconds and once it gets populated it should be available for us to select when we create an EC2 instance and we can also check our routes remember we can sort by network and we will see that our routes have been automatically added that's a very good thing so even though we have to configure several subnets we don't have to configure the routing for them so once again let's create another instance and remember we have to pick the correct region right off the bat or else it will not be available in our drop down menu for the new VPC the custom VPC and it's available here as you can see under network custom VPC and now Europe North 1 with the 10.3 network is available and we create this instance and let's SSH into the US Central one and we can send pings across we're still waiting for instance 3 to get its IP address to get up and running and there we go 10.3.0.2 let's ping it and there we go successful the routes are added automatically dynamic routing at its finest we don't have to worry about anything if you like this video please subscribe please give me a thumbs up and smash that notification bell i will be posting many more tutorials